Hi, everyone. I'm here today with Amantha Murphy, and we're so excited to have her as a presenter at this year's Guy in Congress. She is coming from Kerry, Ireland, and is born and bred of, in the Irish uh, lineage. So um, we'd love to hear maybe a story about one of your first connections growing up with the unseen realms with subtle beings. How did yes, it start yes. for you? Um, I actually was born in England, oh, okay. in, uh, in London, in a, Kil a place called Kilburn, mm -hmm. which is a, or was at that time a very, very strong Irish community. My parents moved over just after the war, mm -hmm. as a lot of Irish did to find jobs. Right. Um, so I grew up there and for the first few years, and I spent my summers coming back and forth here to my grandmother. And actually the house is built on what used to be my grandmother's house that burned wow. down nearly 40 years ago now wow. and so my mother built onto that nice and, but uh, so you are yeah. really on your on your ancestral lands which many of us on my ancestral land yeah. absolutely yeah. and I was yeah. actually researching it a few months ago and as far back as I can see I can go back to 1870 wow. and it was owned by my mother's people mm. Nice. So, um, yeah, and we can't get the any, any more information before that because of all the troubles and things that, right. you know, right. it's hard to, to gather that type of information. Right. But, yeah, this is my soul home. This yeah. is the place where I was always open and happy. And, um, and for me, as a very young child, I always saw these two beings, these two light beings that were very, very tall, and they would be with me they'd be beside the bed and sometimes they'd talk to me and then as I got older from four five six seven upwards when I come home here every year to my grandmother I would run into the field and I would lie in it like my arms open my legs open and I'm up on a hill and I would just breathe and as I breathed I'd become the field and then I'd become the hill and I could feel myself moving up into the mountains that are in front of me and my chest would open and I knew then I was home. This was home. And this old, old woman, this old, old energy, I used to call her she or her. She would come and she would talk to me. And I used to play in the fields here with the fairies and talk to the trees and the stones and the stone beings for us in Ireland, for me anyway, they are the bones of the land. They hold the stories. They are the story keepers, you know. And so they would share stories with me. And I grew up with that. That, to me, was more real than the life I was living, going to school, etc. I was just pretending, just trying to get through it, trying not to be noticed, you know, because in those days they didn't know about dyslexia. And I couldn't spell, still can't. Mm. Uh, but maths was my subject at school. So I was always top for mathematics first prize at the age of six um mm. but couldn't couldn't spell can't learn from a book I can't quote from my own book <laughs> um because it just goes past me but you share a story with me and I will hold that story that story is sacred then that stays with me you know unless it's not meant to unless it's something I'm working with somebody and then it just passes through and if it's heavy I go out to the land and I ask her to assist me with that Oh, nice. So it's always been with me and it's always been a part of me, a part of my life. And when I was 12, I had an eye operation for double vision because I, I was born with double vision. Mm. And, um, and I stopped seeing spirit for the first mm. time in my oh, life. Wow. And I started integrating. I, I made a friend at school <laughs> and, um, and I started integrating more into life. And then at 16, uh, we got a teacher and I went to a convent school and I'm very blessed that actually I'm one of the few people I know that enjoyed their nuns. My nuns were very kind, good women, mm -hmm. and they taught me spirituality. Wow. They had uh, they had two orphanages. They had a deaf and dumb home. And I worked there at weekends with them. And I just thought these women were so kind and, and giving, you know, it, it really taught me a lot I wasn't into Jesus I wasn't brought up praying to Jesus for my granny it was always Mary the mother we pray mm -hmm. to the mother mm -hmm. and um, so I wasn't into the prayer part but I was into their work and their kindness and care and so I was very lucky with that and then 
when I was 16, 15, 16, they brought a man teacher in for mathematics because there were some teachers that weren't nuns and uh, first man in the school. Of course, we were all very excited, bless him. Um, But he he certainly wasn't chosen, let's say, for his looks, you know, and he was the first one to stretch me in mathematics. And um, and he gave me and another girl, Eileen Hurley, a homework to do one weekend. And I came back on the Monday and I said to him, it can't be done. Hmm. And he just smiled at me and it was three lots of three dots. And you had to join all the dots uh-huh. together without crossing a line. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, it can't be done. And I was very quiet and shy in those days. And he just looked at me and he smiled. And I found myself getting a bit irritated, you know, and I said, it can't be done. And he smiled again. <laughs> I said, the only way you can do it is to go outside of the square. And he just looked at me and he said, no one ever told you you had to stay inside the square. Mm-hmm. And I stood there and it was like I was frozen to the ground. I couldn't move. I, I was just and it felt like I'd been swimming underwater for so long. I'd forgotten I was underwater. I just felt mm-hmm. this expansion of energy wow and within days i was talking to spirit again i was wow. connecting with the trees and the fairy folk again and it was like he gave me permission to step outside yeah that's what a lovely yeah. story it was lovely it was and yeah. at the same time you know i never fitted in and of course in those days it just quietens you or it quietened me, yeah. you know, and of course it was then the hippie time and I married a singer in a band and, you know, all of that. Um, but at the same time, my spiritual path was developing. And um, and then one day spirit said to me, you cannot continue to grow. You cannot continue to evolve and take drugs. Because mm. my drug of choice at the time would have been magic mushrooms. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and I said, that's it. OK. So I never took anything after that. And of course, mm-hmm. that brought on the the divorce in many ways, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but my life continued. So at 1920, I was already doing work. I was mm-hmm. assisting people. I was uh, doing clairvoyance. And then in my 20s, I started working with groups and doing different forms of healing. Mm-hmm. Right. So I've been working for over 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. Lovely to have so much behind you (laughs) compared to, I don't know, not living on my ancestral land and having to, you know, really foster these connections. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, we're all where we need to be for whatever reason, but, but it's just lovely to meet someone with such that lineage. It's so great. I do feel rooted. Yeah. yeah, I do feel very rooted yeah. here. And I know this is my soul home. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. I've, I've told my children, you know, when I pass over, I'm going to be a tree here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. So that's lovely. Very yeah. Nice. And so can you give us just maybe a brief overview or snippet of what you'll be presenting at the Congress? Yes, yes. So um, I grew up, as I said, every summer here with my grandmother and she would tell me things, we would talk, we would sit out in the field here and she would share things with me and the stones would share things with me. The two a day, the two a day Danon, who we call the the she, mm-hmm. um, would often come. And I, and I truly believe those two light beings I saw as a very young child came from there. And um, at one point, about 30 years ago, I suppose, I was on a road a back road from Kalani to Kinmare, and it's called uh, the Old Road and the Old Kinmare Road. And we came across a deserted village and I went up behind it. There was a big stone and I could see it was a story keeper. And I went up and I put my hands on the stone. And as I did, I felt like I was plugged in suddenly. And I saw myself, I saw my parents, my grandparents, and it just kept going back and back and back. And then suddenly it hit this place where there was light. And the stone said to me, oh, you're one of the shining ones. And when it said that, it opened up and showed me the story of the village. It was a famine village. And uh, before the famine, there was more than 4,000 people living up there. After the famine, there was less than 400. And and so I didn't know who the shining ones were. I never realized for many years that that was a name for the sheep. Um, And so... 
the energies, the teachings came through me. They came first from my granny, they came from the trees, from the stones. And after a while, I didn't realize, or I didn't, I, I still don't in some ways know whether I'm actually accessing my ancestral memory or whether it's all coming in around me. And I don't worry about that anymore mm -hmm. because it works. Yeah. yeah. And the people I work with benefit from it. And my way of working is to offer what I have as a way of a person finding what they have within themselves. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not looking for people to be another me, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm opening the space so that they can find themselves within that and how they choose to express, how they choose to become more authentic in their own sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Oh, that sounds beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much for your oh, my pleasure. Today. And everyone, Guy in Congress, um, it's guyincongress.org. The dates are January 19th through 21st. And we hope to see you there. Many blessings. Yes. <laughs>